This is the tutorial on function transformations and piecewise functions. In this tutorial, we will cover several key concepts. First, we'll look at defining and graphing piecewise functions. Next, we'll look at graphing functions using vertical and horizontal shifts. And finally, we'll look at graphing functions using reflections. Let's go ahead and begin by discussing piecewise functions. When functions are defined by more than one equation, they are called piecewise functions. Up till now, you will recall that we've been seeing functions with just one equation. If we look at the function below, we will see that there are actually three different sections to it, or pieces, hence the name piecewise functions. Now this example asks us to find the value of f of 0, f of 1, and f of 2. To find f of 0, we observe that when x equals 0, the equation for f is given by f of x equals negative x plus 1. So we have f of 0 equals negative 0 plus 1, which of course equals 1. Next, they ask us to find the value of f of 1. So when we have f of 1, you'll notice that the equation for f is f of x equals 2. Thus, f of 1 equals 2. And finally, when x equals 2, the equation for f of x is x squared. So we have f of 2 equals 2 squared, or 4. To find the domain of f, we look at its definition. Since f is defined for all x greater than or equal to 3, the domain of f is x is greater than or equal to negative 3, or the interval negative 3 with a bracket, comma, infinity. To graph f, we graph each piece because, as we've discussed, it's a piecewise function with more than one section. So first we graph the line y equals negative x plus 1, and we keep only the part for which negative 3 is less than or equal to x is less than 1. Then we plot the point 1, 2, because when x equals 1, f of x equals 2. And finally, we graph the parabola y equals x squared and keep only the part for which x is greater than 1. So the graph that we end up with looks something like this. So as you can see from the graph on the right, we have the three lines plotted. First we have the green portion showing y equals negative x plus 1. Then we have the blue portion showing y equals x squared. And you'll notice that both of these graphs do not have the end point included. And then we have the point itself, 2, when x equals 1. So that is how we graph the piecewise function shown in this equation. The next important concept in this tutorial relates to shifts of function. We have vertical and horizontal shifts. First, we can take an equation, y equals f of x, as shown in the first paragraph here. And you'll notice that if we say a positive real number c is added to the outputs of that function, the graph of that new function, y equals f of x plus c, will be the same graph of the original function, f, shifted vertically up the amount of c units. Now the other key concept here relates to shifting vertically down. So we have the second paragraph definition. If a positive number c is subtracted from the outputs of a function y equals f of x, the graph of the new function y equals f of x minus c is the graph of f shifted vertically down the amount of c units. So let's go ahead and look at both of those more specifically. So when we take that first definition, when we add the real number c to our function y equals f of x, we have the graph being shifted up vertically the amount of c units. Let's go ahead and look at assuming y1 equals x squared and y2 would equal x squared plus 2. This is how we go ahead and graph the function. You'll see our original function y equals x squared is shown here in the graph with the red line. And then we go ahead and add 2 to that function. So we have y2 equals x squared plus 2. And we get the blue graph shown here, which is exactly the same dimensions as the original function graph. But you'll see it's just shifted up the y-axis to units, because c in this case is equal to 2. So same graph shifted vertically up. Let's go ahead and take an example of shifting vertically down. The second section of our definition says, if a positive number c is subtracted from the outputs of the function y equals f of x, the graph of the new function y equals f of x minus c is the graph of f shifted vertically down the amount of c units. So how does that look graphically? 
Very simply, we have our original graph here in red, y equals f of x squared, and then we add negative 2, we are left with the graph shown in green, which is identical to the original graph shown in red, but it, as you'll notice, it has shifted down two units on the y-axis, same shape as our original graph. The next important concept that we will be discussing involves horizontal shifts of functions. Horizontal shifts result from adding or subtracting a value h, with h being greater than zero, before performing the operation given by the function. Let's look at an example of a horizontal shift. If we have the basic function f of x equals square root of x, we will have a horizontal shift result if we have f of x plus 3 equals square root of x plus 3. So you can see we add 3 to x before we perform the operation of the function. The graph is then shifted left 3 units. In contrast, we have vertical shifts where we would have f of x, the function itself, plus 3, which would equal the square root of x, then the addition of 3. In that case, we take the square root first, we perform the operation of the function, then we add the value. In this case, the graph is shifted up 3 units, so the shift vertically would be along the y-axis, whereas horizontal shifts will occur with the graph being adjusted along the x-axis. Let's look at that in more detail. Following along with what we just saw regarding horizontal and vertical shifts, we are left with the following two definitions. First we have if f of x is replaced by f of x minus h when h is greater than zero, the graph of the new function y equals f of x minus h is the graph of f of x shifted horizontally right by h units. Next, we have if f of x is replaced by f of x plus h with h greater than 0, the graph of the new function y equals f of x plus h is the graph of f of x shifted horizontally left by h units. Let's look at that more specifically to see exactly what it looks like graphically. Say we are given the basic function z1 equals x squared. So we have the three variations of the function, the original function, the addition of the value of h being subtracted to the original function, and the value of h being added to the original function. When we do that, we get the following graphs, which look like so. You'll see the graph of the original function in the blue, showing z1 equals x squared. The graph of the second variation, shown in yellow, where we have a value of x subtracted from the function itself. We show a horizontal shift in that situation. And finally, we have f of x being replaced by the addition of 2, so we have f of x plus 2. You will notice that the graph is shifted horizontally left by 2 units. The next important concept we're going to look at in this tutorial regards graphing a reflection on the x-axis. When the right side of the function y equals f of x is multiplied by negative 1, the graph of the new function y equals negative f of x is the reflection about the x-axis of the graph of the function y equals f of x. So let's go ahead and look at what that looks like graphically. We have our two equations y equals x squared minus 4 and then when we multiply it times negative 1, we're left with the equation y equals x squared plus 4. So when we look at the graphs of the two equations, we are shown here in the gray graph, we have the original equation. Multiplied by negative 1, we are left with a graph which is identical except it is reflected about the x-axis. So it is as if we folded the graph along the x-axis, we get the exact identical graph reflected. The next key concept covered in this tutorial, it involves graphing a reflection on the y-axis. So our definition says for the function y equals f of x, the graph of the new function y equals f of negative x is the reflection about the y-axis of the graph of the function y equals f of x. So graphically, what does that look like? Well, it looks like this. So in simpler terms, to reflect on the y-axis, simply replace x by negative x. 
you will notice on the graph below that we have y1 equals x plus 1, y2 equals negative x plus 1. Those two graphs are identical except they're reflected as if we folded the original graph along the y-axis and we got the same graph going the opposite direction. 